Have you ever had the creepy feeling of being watched by something or someone? How about all the time? You may think me as being crazy, but it all started. I bought a new house in the small town of Winthrop. The house was cheap, but the most important part was I needed to get away from the city. A few months ago, I had a run-in with a stalker. Thankfully, I had managed to get him arrested, but I still had the feeling of being constantly watched. I felt like there were eyes on me everywhere, at home and on the streets, so I decided to move out into the countryside with less people so I could have peace of mind. The agent who showed me the house was required to mention that a serial killer had previously owned the house. This is why the house was so cheaply priced. However, he and later, my neighbor Sarah convinced me to pay no thought to this. Four other owners had lived in the house in the past and had reported loving the house. I also came to love the house. The house itself was large and somewhat old but otherwise was quite welcoming. The furnishings were beautiful and very comfortable. The people in the town were very friendly, often bringing over food or inviting me over for dinner. Get togethers, they said, were the key for making sure all who lived in Winthrop loved it there. After a week, though, I stopped loving it. The feeling of being watched returned, worse than before. I tried to ignore it, but soon I started losing sleep. Giant bags began to form under my eyes. Yawning became regular for me almost as much as breathing. Sarah was kind enough to let me stay at her house for a few weeks. During that time, I learned about Forrest Carter, the serial killer who used to live in my house. While no one knows the exact murder count, Carter, who is also known as the Winthrop Peacock, was a man with an extremely severe case of narcissism. Legend says he couldn't fall asleep unless he felt like he was being watched. He was finally arrested when they found he had put up a scarecrow to watch him while he was sleeping during the night. Unfortunately, it wasn't an actual scarecrow. Horace Carter had murdered a 17-year-old girl just so her corpse could stare at him. That story gave me shivers. After I went back home, I felt like there were eyes watching me everywhere I went in that house. Today was the first day I acted out. I was in the kitchen cooking when I felt a strong sensation of being watched. I took the knife I had in my hand and violently threw it at the wall where it lodged in deep. As I pulled it out, I found myself staring at a pair of eyes, floating in a jar of formaldehyde. For hours now, I have been watching the police peel back the wallpaper of my house. So far, they have found 142 pairs of eyeballs in glass jars. The scariest thing, though, is each and every pair of eyes were staring at me. Our neighbor's daughter passed away after going to bed with a severe headache in which ended up being aneurysm. After her funeral, the parents went away to get their minds off the tragedy. The father asked my uncle to watch the pets. My parents went with him the first time my uncle went over there to feed the pets. My mother had heard there was a grand piano and she wanted to play it. After entering the house, my uncle and my father headed to the basement to see the animals. My mother went to the piano on the ground floor. She was playing it when she felt something brush her ankles. She thought a cat must have left the basement and walked past her. She kept playing and then she felt it again. She looked under the piano and saw nothing. When she started again, she felt hands clasp her legs tightly. She dashed to the basement door, called my uncle and father, and waited for them outside. My uncle could tell my mom was rattled and asked what was wrong. She told him what had happened, and he turned white. He told her the daughter who had died used to play a game with her father. When he played the piano, she crawled underneath, grab his ankles, and push his feet up and down on the pedals. One night when I was ten, I was woken up by my bedroom door opening, followed by someone sitting on my bed. I felt my leg grazed and the bed sink under a person's weight. It's just mom, I thought, and I opened my eyes. It was not my mom. I found an eyeless boy who had black, empty sockets and looked about my age, sitting at the end of my bed. He extended his hand, and it was a little box. I was startled but reached out. He pulled back. I reached again and said, give it. Then I blinked, and when I reopened my eyes, he was gone. But I could still see the imprint where he'd sat on my bed. As forward five years, my girlfriend came over to do homework. After she finished, she took a nap while she waited for her parents. When they arrived, I tried waking her up. She opened her eyes, suddenly looking up at a corner where the wall met the ceiling. She pointed there and went back to sleep. I shook her again. She came to, and I explained what she'd done. She looked haunted. Up on the wall, I saw a little boy with no eyes. He was there in a Spider-Man pose, staring at me. I freaked out and told her my story about the same kid. 
Fast forward another five years, I was with the same girlfriend, and we had a two-year-old. We were living in my parents' house, in my old room. My daughter started waking up at the same time every night, and she'd talk. After a while, I noticed she had almost the same conversation every night. I playfully asked her once whom she was talking to. She said, it's a little boy. He's nice. He's lost and looking for his mommy. My daughter's nightly conversations continued until we got our own place later that year.